but I want to take it a little bit seconds and pull you into my world to discuss just how bad Russia is doing. And this here is a data chart that's been um, arranged by Ragnar. Uh, oh my God. Uh, the guy's name is Ragnar. He's from Iceland, but his last name is completely unpronounceable for me. I'm very sorry. It's uh, And I don't want to butcher that. But the uh, huge respect, I use it a lot, and I want you to, to kind of follow me with this. So here, we want to pay attention to some of the things. Firstly, we see that the averages for, for troops are continuing to grow for Russians. We see that helicopters are definitely going down, so that's some kind of forward-facing aviation. And we see that a lot of other trucks uh, are falling well obviously and also cruise missiles but cruise missiles are uh because russia is conducting these airstrikes and ukrainian uh ukrainian um ukrainian anti-air is working pretty good so all in all we can see the suggestion from this is that russians are starting bleeding dry and i think it's because russians are doing the dumbest shit ever and it's confirmed by some of the analysts that i just listened uh, in recent days they are saying that Russians are very dumb. They are essentially taking the old and newly conscript people, they are putting them in a brigade, like inside of their units, and they're instantly pu pushing them towards attacking Ukraine. And that's the dumbest. So they're not even giving them time to, you know, kind of group up, uh, accumulate. They're instantly throwing them at the Ukrainian forces, which is, it is so wasteful. Why do that? It's, it's, it's crazy. And because they're attacking, a lot of them are requesting uh fire close air support so something like helicopters and helicopters are completely falling down and also to kind of note about uh, what i was telling you about the uh, also here's something that the uh, a lot i'm gonna do a little bit of a tangent here so people have been asking what are the losses for ukraine this is the losses for ukraine uh, tab i don't think it counts personnel but it counts a lot of uh a lot of equipment but the point is uh, judging by equipment you can see approximately the ratio that ukraine is fighting the russians it's about 3.7 to 1 and we need to take into account that this is also taking summer period where ukraine didn't have any kind of um, artillery and they almost run dry on any kind of artillery shells so that's when a lot of casualties were inflicted on ukrainian forces so this is this is something to keep in mind and i'm pretty sure that this is also a good estimate if you want to estimate how much uh, men losses were there for the ukrainians as well so this war is definitely taxing on ukrainians as well um, then i want to show you the shelling map uh, and this is very interesting because this is what it shows us so remember i told you about the the uh, road between svatova and kremina now we see here a lot of shellings this is this is so i can enlarge i will show you so this is here svatove and here is kremina and then there is the road so if ukrainians are indeed like we see that kuzemivka for example is not being shelled because it's being controlled by the russian forces however there are shellings here uh, most probably because ukrainians are advancing in that area and once we compare it with where the map goes it's quite well and when I told you about the fact that Ukrainians are trying to control uh, some of the road in this area, just south, like a little bit north of, of Kremina, we can see that, yes, indeed, oh, yes, indeed, we have some kind of a shelling that's going on. Now, if it's controlled by Russians, why would they shell? Because this is Russian shelling. If it's controlled by the Russians, why are they shelling their own positions? Makes no sense, right? So from that we can kind of deduct that, and also with looking from some of my other sources, that Ukrainians indeed are challenging the control right now for the kremlin Svatova line. So this is just a little bit of me taking you into the world that I'm looking at. Uh, you can check out all the different losses here uh, about the tanks and, and ratios. It's all uh, very nice and cool. You can, you can figure it out. But I want to pay your attention mostly to this one this is the original russian invasion force so from here you can instantly see russia already in in uh 
killed or wounded has lost more than a hundred percent of their invasion force initial invasion force they pretty much are out of their planes they lost more than hundred percent of their helicopter force of the initial force tanks artillery apcs it is a disaster what russia is experiencing in ukraine is is so mind-bogglingly disaster so by this point like we remember that the forces that russia accumulated was essentially the the fighting force that uh, russia was having as a regular army so by this point ukraine has completely wiped out the russian regular army and it's i know it's been said a lot but for me just when i see the numbers it's like 100 percent 100 percent 100 percent 100 percent and only like planes just a little bit behind but the uh, the biggest bottleneck for always for the russians were not the planes it was the skilled pilots though with planes there's also issues you've seen a lot of planes just falling down because the equipment is just breaking down and this is the most telling and i'm gonna switch here to my vlogging camera and start talking to you about things so this is a big disaster for the Russians because while right now, especially we see that Russians are having casualties that are comparable to what they have experienced uh, at the start of the war. This is obviously because newly mobilized people coming in. So a lot of them are dying, but we will not see the repeat that we had over the first phase, phase of the war when it went to the second phase where Ukrainians start uh, receiving a lot of casualties. This is most importantly because Ukrainians before were having like some javelins and they were fighting guerrilla tactics against Russians who were having all these fancy equipment. Now Ukrainians are giving are getting a lot of a lot of equipment and I'm going to see if I can So this is losses of Russia in Ukraine per uh, and with uh, all kind of heavy equipment being delivered to Ukraine. So you see this chart and it's it's quite telling we basically see the more heavy weapons are supplied to ukraine and that chart is you notice that the trend is growing more and more and more weapons is being supplied to ukraine so we will see russian casualties just rise 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 and rise and this is especially telling when we look to something like the fact that Russia is doing all of the mistakes at, at the same time. They've said that they're backing up on the grain deal, which basically, because the, grain, the Erdogan, the kind of the good negotiating partner of the Russia, was supposed to be ste stepping in for Russia. And they said, well, now we're canceling the deal that you negotiated. That was a kind of like sucker punch to Erdogan. So he didn't like it. And what they did is basically well it doesn't fucking matter let's just go on with the deal we have the deal with ukraine right so now erdogan and united nations in ukraine are just saying we don't give a shit about what russia do we have the balls so we're gonna send the ships with grain anyway then uh germany was for a longer time the partner of russia and i think now has been like a big switch recently with uh, the president uh, of Germany visiting Ukraine because he was a big advocate for the Russians. But after visiting Ukraine, he came out with a speech that whew, is very hard to call, how do you say, held back. He didn't hold back anything. He was literally striking at the heart of the fact that Russia is, he didn't call it fascist state, but it was heavily implied that Russia is basically the global evil. So Russia is its worst enemy. In this war, Ukraine is getting more and more support. The data does not lie. Russians are going to die more and more actively. And Russia is doing everything to not win any favors. And it's also not doing it very smartly. We told, talked about the fact that mobilized will have an impact on a battlefield. However, if Russia is just going to send them in waves to Ukrainian guns to now fully equipped and more and more every day heavy weaponly equipped ukraine ukrainian forces they're trying to repeat the second phase when ukrainians didn't have any ammo for their artillery but now they're just being struck down and they are not adapting at all russia is in for a complete military disaster it's it's just so ludicrous and uh, we get a lot of buzzing like i just want to address this because this is happening in the community and uh, this video is going to be super long i don't care but 
so there's a lot of like people buzzing. Oh, Ukraine, Ukraine is like, you know, it's uh, it's not it's not capturing Russia is recapturing some of the land. Let's take a couple of steps and, and move away from this white noise that people are, are spreading the trolls and so on. So at the start of the war, they were like buzz, 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 buzz. Russia, Ukraine is about to fall three days to Kiev. Then it's like uh, like where Kiev is almost taken. That Kiev is about to get encircled. The Kiev is gonna be falling. Kharkiv is already taken. Yada yada yada. yada. All these maps already with uh, Ukraine being collapsed on all sides. Didn't happen. Ukraine stood. Whatever I said and my sources said. I always say like if you want to check the information, I don't say any sources here because this is mostly I try to have it as my blog and keep the discussion on actual messages rather than what is the source or what is not the source. But my sources have so far been proving themselves quite right. And I'm very happy to say that this also makes me right. So whenever you're doubting, like a lot of people are saying, like, I really hope this is true. Listen to people that produce the same results. And I'm getting you on this journey. I'm trying to give you whatever gets you to the actual situation resolution to see the actual results. If something is wrong, I will tell you what is wrong. I always show you the, the for example, today, the ratio of Ukrainian forces. It's not going easy. Ukrainians are losing a lot of lives in this, but they're not losing battle capable units. Non battle capable units have been wiped up for wiped out for Ukrainians at all in this war. They have all been reinforced ever since. They are also having a rotation. Like there have been issues with that before, but now it's kind of settled. And then again, we hear buzz, 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 buzz on the second stage of the war. Oh, I was telling you, Ukrainian counterattack is gonna come. Every every episode of this update, I was telling you, Ukrainian counterattack is gonna come. It's gonna come. It's gonna come. It's gonna come. And everyone's like, Nah, it's never gonna come. Ukraine doesn't have the strength. We're gonna kill it. Everyone like it's about just about time of Russia just killing Ukraine. And then oh counterattack and then now we're at the next stage and again now it's everyone buzzing 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 oh ukrainian attack is completely dead listen to what they're saying their messages is is what matters we went from ukraine is falling from three days the three-day war like this is where i was i would say you just look at the darth putin what he's saying the three-day war that russians were and uh, russian shills were telling you about and we see this graph. This is where we are. And it's going to get even worse for the Russians as we go forward. Thank you so much for listening. Huge thanks for all of the supporters of this channel. And see you next time.